But as we continue just to think about the Christmas story this morning, I want us to think about that um, last verse of In the Bleak Midwinter that we're going to sing um, tonight, all of it. But that last verse, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, I would bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I would do my part. Yet what can I give him? I can give my heart. See, the whole opportunity that we have this Christmas time is to gather around the story and worship the Lord Jesus. Take this opportunity, maybe for the first time, to give our heart to Christ. We've just been told a little bit about the story. We know that the shepherds there, they were living out in the fields and they were actually living outside of the town in the fields because they were a rejected people. People didn't like shepherds in those days. And in the middle of the night, the glory of the Lord shone around them. And they were, as Isaac reminded us, terrified. They were really frightened. And yet the angel said to them, Fear not, for I bring you good news of great joy that will be with you for all the people. For this day in the city of David, a Savior has been born who is Christ the Lord. And you'll find him wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And then suddenly, as if to prove the point that this was a work of God, the angels worship the living God. They gave their hearts to Christmas, to what it was all about. They gave their hearts in worship to the Christ child. And then the shepherds, after they got over the shock, well, they made their way, didn't they, to the stable. And they said, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing which the Lord has told us about. And so they rushed off. They ran down those fields and they found Mary and Joseph and the sign that the angels told them was right they saw a baby lying in this manger which was of course an animal's feeding trough and then they told everyone around what they had seen what the angels had told them and they returned to their work to their lives glorifying and praising God that is worshiping the Lord Jesus and so we know that the angels worshiped Jesus and the shepherds worshiped Jesus but it doesn't stop there does it because we also hear about thanks Marcus an old man in the Christmas story now this is a while later it's about I think it's, it, but according to Jewish law it would have been 81 days after the birth of Jesus we read about this man who lived in Jerusalem. Anyone know what his name was? Anyone want to shout it out? Simeon. That's right. And he was described as a righteous man and devout. And he was waiting for the coming of the promised Messiah that he read about in the Old Testament in his Bible. And the Holy Spirit actually said to Simeon, he revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the baby Jesus, the Lord Jesus. And so the Holy Spirit one day led Simeon to the temple where he worshipped. And it was at that time that Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus into the temple for this ceremony, for this religious service that needed to happen because of the law of Moses. And Simeon saw him and he took him and he took him into his arms and he cried out to God. You can read all about it in Luke 2. He said, Lord, you're letting your servant depart in peace according to your promise. My eyes have seen your salvation that you have prepared for all the peoples, a light for the Gentiles and for glory to your people, Israel. He was overcome with worship. And worship, you know, 
We kind of paint it as a boring thing or something where we all have to be serious. But so far, we've got angels who are overcome with worship and it's joy. We've got the shepherds who are scampering around the fields outside Bethlehem full of joy and come to worship happily. And now we see this old man, Simeon, full of awe and worship of the Lord Jesus. You know, he died. He knew his days were up. He knew that he would see the Christ child before he passed away. But even that informed his departure. It informs his death. He died a happy man knowing that he had seen the Messiah. So we've seen so far all of these people worshipping, but it doesn't stop there. Because in the temple that day as well, there was the prophetess, Anna, in the temple. She was 84 years old. She was a widow who did not leave the temple, spending her time around the house of God, worshipping and fasting and praying. And she arrived on that particular day, the same day as Simeon. And she saw the baby Jesus, and she again was prompted by the Spirit to recognize that this was the Messiah, the chosen one, the one that all people will worship one day. And she began to give thanks God to God and to speak of him uh, to all around her. And she described him as the one that they were waiting for, the one who would free up his people. You know, Anna, she was 84 years old. She was an old woman, along with Simeon, this old man, happily giving their heart to Jesus, as well as the angels, as well as the shepherds. But you know, don't you? The Christmas story doesn't end there either. Because we read in the Christmas account, don't we? Uh, well, there weren't just three wise men, maybe there were three leaders, but there was a magi, a, a very possibly a, a large number of people, men, making their way over from the east. And we know that this was quite a while after Jesus was born. It was during the reign of, of King Herod, and, and Mary and Joseph and Jesus were still in Bethlehem. Uh, these wise men, they set off from the east for Jerusalem, to worship the Lord Jesus. They weren't even Israelites. They weren't people who lived in Jerusalem, but they were astrologers and very clever kind of guys who had seen a bright new star and they knew that that was signaling that a newborn king had come and they wanted to worship him. And so when they arrived, they came to Jerusalem and they visited King Herod. Now, I don't know if you know much about King Herod, but he was a nasty man. He was, maybe we could say, the President Putin of his day. Maybe worse. But he was a bad ruler and somebody who killed people for fun, you could say. And when they arrived then in Jerusalem, King Herod and all the people in the city, they were a bit alarmed because King Herod didn't like the idea that there was another king on the way. And so King Herod asked the high priests and the scribes where this promised saviour or Messiah would be born. And they were able to look in the Torah and the, in the prophecies and they replied that the prophet Micah had written that it would be in Bethlehem of Judea. And so Herod wasn't very pleased about this. And yet he met with the Magi, with the wise men. There's Herod on the right and Herod secretly met with them and found out from them the time that the star had appeared. And he told them, oh, yes, I tell you what, you go and search carefully for the child. And when you find him, tell me so that I can go and worship him too. Do you think Herod was telling the truth? No, it was a trap. And so the wise men agreed with Herod at that point, and they continued on, and they went down to Bethlehem, where the star rested over the stable. And we read about these international, well-educated, 
skillful, rich foreigners going to Jesus. And guess what they did? They worshipped him. They stopped at the place where Jesus was staying. Jesus was maybe two years old or around that kind of age at this point. They fell down and they worshipped him and they opened their treasure sacks. And as we have already read, they gave, them, uh, they gave him gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, all these expensive gifts, perfumes, um, things like that. But then they were warned, remember, in a dream, not to go back to Herod, not to tell him, in other words, where Jesus was. And so they left for their own country by a different road. So, so far, we've thought of the angels, we've thought of the shepherds, we've thought of Simeon, we've thought of Anna, and now we remember these wise men. All of them, different ages, different backgrounds, all centered on worshipping the Lord Jesus because they knew who he was, that he was the one who would come and rule over a people who he would save from their sins. And we know that because of what happened concerning Herod and the threat that he was, that after that time in Bethlehem, the wise men had gone Um, An angel of the Lord came to Joseph and said, you need to get up, you need to escape, you need to take the child and you need to run away quickly to Egypt and stay there until I tell you because Herod intends to search for the child and kill him. And so that very night, Joseph took Mary and Jesus and they headed for Egypt. But you know, there's a very important thing now for us to take home with us before we come back again tonight, hopefully with, hopefully with some friends and family, to our carol service this evening, I want you to take this away with you this morning. You know, all of the people we see in the Christmas story that we've looked at this morning knew that they were there to worship the Lord Jesus Christ. They worshipped a little baby, And yet there was one who didn't want to worship him. There was one who actually wanted to do away with him. And that was King Herod. But Herod, you see, is like all people who won't worship Jesus. Yes, he was the worst in a way. He murdered little baby boys because he wanted rid of anyone who was going to be a king over him. But Herod is a picture of what we're like if we don't want to worship Jesus today. You see, the evidence is there, and the statement is clear that Christ is going to rule this world once again, and he is the one that all people must worship. And if we reject him, and if we don't want to worship him, we reject the Lord Jesus. We're like King Herod. And so the question I want to leave with you this morning is, will you... Worship Jesus this Christmas. Not just observe the stories or say what you have to say in a carol service or do what it is you have to do at Christmas time, but will you be careful to worship him? And what do we mean by worship? We mean, don't we, what that hymn says that we sang in the bleak mid-winter. It says, what can I give him, poor as I am? If I were a shepherd, yes, I'd bring a lamb. If I were a wise man, I'd do my part. Yet what can I give him? I'm going to give him my heart. Have you done that yet? Have you handed your life into Jesus' hands? Because you know that is the right thing to do. Because he came the Son of God, to rescue you from your sins through the cross at Calvary. Are you a worshipper of the Lord Jesus Christ? Amen. Let's just pray as we bring our time to a close. Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning and, well, this afternoon indeed, and we thank you, Lord, just for this 
space and time when we're being able to gather together as your church family and for the children to be involved and to read the accounts of your birth in the Bible. Lord, we pray through all of this that you would help us to reach out to you in faith, to open our hearts to the person of Jesus Christ and to know him personally in our lives. Because, Lord Jesus, we know that that is the purpose of your birth. That was the purpose of your coming, that we may be made right with God and be living worshippers of the living, risen, glorified Jesus Christ. So, Lord, take away all of the other conflicting distractions of Christmas and help our hearts to be right before you this year. And we ask this for the praise of your name, for all that you have done and all that you're doing for us. We ask it for your name alone. Amen.